picture of a painting that was done by William Vent, who lived from 1865 to 1946. He was a German-born American landscape painter who earned notoriety as a Southern California landscape painter. One of his original paintings sold a few years ago for over six million dollars. He um, painted this picture entitled Laguna Coast in 1918. I picked this picture um, not only because it's a beautiful painting, but it would give us an opportunity to work on the rocks uh, on the shore and the uh, waves crashing in on the rocks. So we can work on that a little bit more. So let's get started. I pre-primed the canvas with two coats of gesso and then I applied a underpainting of pastel blue and pastel orange uh, so that you'll see um, the orange is primarily where the land area is and the blues primarily where the water is. And um, I did that just because I am seeing that those complementary colors are in our picture and um, so I just had a little fun with it. I'm painting the very pale blue sky in the background. Um, we've been working on big sky paintings, but this is a very small sky painting. We just have, uh, oh, maybe a half an inch, three-fourths of an inch of sky. Um, and where the water and the sky meet, um, it's a very subtle um, change, but the uh, water will be uh, bluer where the water and the sky meet. And now I'm laying in where the land masses are, uh, and I've mixed together a um, darker peach, um, color, orange color uh, that we had been working with earlier. And with an underpainting, um, what happens with that is that if um, there's an area that isn't hit by your painting, um, then that color from the underpainting will show through. And I'm just marking out those areas uh, where I see the land is to just kind of keep track of where we're at in the picture. And I'm not wanting to copy everything that he has done in his painting. Um, I'm going to incorporate a lot of those same elements, but I'm okay if, you know, I don't copy the land exactly the same as he did or the water. Um, if I have an extra rock or are missing a rock, I'm okay with that. I, we are doing a study of his painting and um, we're doing that so that we can improve on our own painting. I'm adding the darker areas where the land meets the water. I'm also blocking in those dark shapes that I see in the landscape. I'm now adding some tan 
colors, sand type colors that I mixed up um, using what appeared to be his color palette of the yellow ochre raw sienna or burnt sienna um, mixing those um, with um, a little um, yellow a little uh, white um, to you know just try to come in the same family as his color palette and trying to lay those colors down uh, in the manner that he did. I am also observing the direction of his paint brush strokes or his palette knife. Um, after looking at this a little more closely, it does look like he used a palette knife uh, with his painting. Uh, I'm using a brush and so it's giving a different effect but the brush strokes or um, the palette knife, the direction of the marks um, helps create um, shape. And um, so I wanna make sure that I do that as well. As we've talked about in other videos, that the land mass that's in the distance is, you're not going to be able to see the features as well because it's in the background. And the colors are going to be <clears throat> more muted. And um, so we're going to do a cool effect on this. Uh, back land mass. Um, so hang around um, and we'll be doing that a little later. We'll be using the same principles on these other land masses. There's also some rocks that are scattered about in the water and the shadow side of the rock is going to be darker, of course, than the, heart, the part that's hit by the uh, light of the sun. And so we're going to, you know, achieve that effect um, by putting the darker hues on the shadow side and the lighter colors on the upper side. We'll come back in and add some highlights too um, to these other 
land masses that are projecting. I'm coming back in and reestablishing the darks. Now because that is in the distance, um, I'm going to have some other mountains closer to the forefront. Um, I don't want it to be my darkest colors. I will reserve the very darkest colors um, for those that are in the foreground. I'm observing the colors and putting those colors um, down. I'm not really worried about blending at this point. It's just laying down those splotches of colors as I see them and creating the shape of that particular land area.
I'm now painting some of those rocks that are scattered about in the surf, the, uh, remembering the shadow side and the light side uh, to make sure that I um, account for, for that so that the rock will look more three-dimensional. Do you remember that effect that we talked about earlier um, that I said I would come back on that distant land mass and make it look more like uh, it's in the distance and uh, more like it is a mountain? I've mixed together a very thin, uh, watered down, um, light orange color. It's got some burnt sienna in it to tone it down and a little bit of uh, the blue color uh, to mute it. And so I'm taking a large um, filbert brush and I've dampened the ends of it with water. And um, I'm going in over that distant land. It's gonna make it recede further into the background. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the water now. I noticed that there are some blue-violet areas in the water, um, as well as that turquoise color. I'm not sure uh, why the darker blue-violet, but I'm definitely seeing it. I'm wondering if maybe it's some more rocks that are maybe under the surface of the water. And so what we're seeing is um, the shadow of those, or um, maybe it's areas of deeper water. I'm not really sure, uh, but I love those colors close to each other. I think they look nice, and um, I want to make sure I include those as well. I'm adding the lighter blue colors in.
we are adding the very pale blue now where the water is coming in, the surf is coming in and hitting the rock. As we draw the surf coming in around the rock, uh, we have to think of the effect of the rock uh, has on the water and how the water behaves um, when it comes in contact with the rock and um, to try to uh, draw that. And William Vent um, did an excellent job uh, of that and uh, so he has left us a good example to follow. I'm continuing to observe um, his painting and noticing the blue-violet areas um, that he has um, picked up in the water. Um, he's drawn them a little like a semicircle, um, and he's got that uh, blue-violet color uh, with a lighter turquoise color on top of that.
I'm using the fan brush now to go in over that area that I just painted with a um, lighter turquoise and a darker turquoise kind of um, rotating those um, and using the seesaw motion back and forth with my fan brush um, to kind of smooth those areas out and it gives the um, appearance of waves coming in the shore. And as I continue to observe his painting, I'm able to make some adjustments to mine, uh, which is what I'm doing here. And then also um, I have to look at it and say, you know, what areas uh, do I want to change uh, to make it more aesthetically pleasing to me? Uh, so I'm getting a little creative here as well. And with a few finishing touches, and we're done. This is a finished painting. I'm pleased with the results. Of course, I can compare it to William Vint's painting and um, see that he is certainly an accomplished painter.